Hey there, home labbers and engineers, FE Engineer here. Today I want to just make a quick video and go over a couple basic things for stable diffusion when it comes to how to get the styles that you want, how to get images to look the way that you want them to from a stylistic point of view. So let's get into it. Style-wise, there's a couple of different things that you can do to really up your game. Two of the big things you can do are here in the extensions. There is the Style Selector XL and Style Z. Both of them are good. Both of them seem to work as best I can tell. I haven't had any major problems with either of them. And you can get them both by installing just as you normally would in Automatic 11.11. Either you can find them under the Available tab and type in Styles. or you can install from URL, and I will have the URLs for both of these in the video description below. So let's take a, a look at what they do. Going back over in the text to image, after you install and reload your UI and everything, you will then have this SDXL styles. And if you wanted to enable it, all you need to do is click the enable button and then it basically just gives you a whole bunch of styles and you can uh let's generate a prompt a forest and a mountain so this is using the dreamlike diffusion model and we will just start out with abstract, a forest and a mountain, generate. And <laughs> that's pretty good. That's, that looks like a forest and a mountain. There also seem to be mountains in the distance. If we click on alien, We certainly have a pretty alien type photo here. And if we choose, let's choose Minecraft. Whoa, that's, well, personally, I don't like it. I think that's kind of not very good. We'll do hyper realism. Maybe that one will come out better. Wow. Yeah, that that is hyper realistic. But so you'll see that it's really easy to have a very simple prompt and generate, generally speaking, really good styles that are styles. They are stylistically different from each other. Another very similar tool to this SDXL styles is the style Z. When you install it and run it, you will get this little painter's palette up here. If you click on this, you will see that in fact, you do get uh, over here, these categories. This is probably what you wanna choose from the most. And the categories, you'll have favorites, which I don't have any favorited. You'll have artists, which will I'll let, let you choose a style that is specific to a different type of artist. And then they have the styles tab, which is overall what most people are probably thinking of stylistically. Uh, we can choose futuristic sci-fi and generate an image from it. And that does look like a futuristic sci-fi forest in a mountain. I think both of these extensions do a really good job. I think they will help you to create interesting and unique styles and to take your artwork in directions that maybe from prompting alone might be somewhat difficult. Along with that, let's put in our own custom styles that we may want to use and reuse over and over. Let's clear this stuff out.
And then let's take a look at the built-in styles tab in Automatic 11.11. This styles tab in Automatic 11.11 is exactly what it sounds like. It is a, a tool that is built for reusing styles. And the way that you edit things are by going over to this little paintbrush over here that says edit styles and you can click on it. And then you will see effectively a couple different boxes. So a prompt and a negative prompt and then a name. When I create styles, I try to create things that are very specific to the idea of the image that I wanna create. So I may have different styles for things like aspect ratios. And here I have 16 by nine and some common prompts for 16 by nine are this 16 by 9, 16 by 9, panoramic, negative prompts are going to be 1 by 1, 4 by 3, 3 by 2, 2 by 3, 3 by 4, portrait. And this helps me to create more of a landscape or 16 by 9 type image. And the way that this actually helps is this helps the model to pull from images that are specifically in a similar type of aspect ratio so that it knows how to effectively size things a bit better. It improves getting images that look good when I am in fact generating a 16 by nine image. But some ideas that I try to use in here is I just try to look at one very specific piece of the art that I want to control that might be the time of day, the type of lighting, you know, whether I'm doing people and if I'm doing people, I have a whole slew of different things, a lot of them in the negative prompt that I want to avoid. But I find that creating very simple ideas for what I wanna do, you know, that only talk about a very, very specific piece of the artwork you know, helps me to get art that is what I'm actually targeting. You know, if I want a picture to be a nighttime picture, well, then I want it to be a nighttime picture. I don't want any daytime pictures. I don't want full sun or daytime or sunset or sunrise. I want it to be nighttime with moonlight, ray tracing, HDR, things like that. And then you can, of course, combine all of these effectively together to create really, really nice art. So let's take a look. So my entire prompt is a city on top of a mountain. I have no styles of any sort applied, generate. Okay, I mean, that's sort of a city in a valley with a mountaintop over top of it. Now let's say I wanted it to be at a specific time of day called the golden hour. Okay, again, picture on top of a mountain with a city in the valley below. And you can see that the lighting is now in a way that, that matches what the golden hour is. The golden hour is the hour after sunrise or the hour before sunset when the light comes at a certain angle and so you get more oranges and reds. So now let's add in our style for landscape photography. And now this has created a more landscape photography style. You know, it definitely looks like it has a a better photographer took this picture. And then if we want, we can also apply a style from like SDXL. Um, let's look at maybe alien. When you combine all of these things together, so here is alien SDXL styles 
with my landscape photography at the time of the golden hour and it's just showing a city on top of a mountain you know you can see that you can get some really interesting combinations of styles that can start to generate things that are more along the lines of what you're looking for you get greater control as well as the fact that because you are reusing these styles over and over you can start to get an idea of kind of what to expect your styles will start to become a bit more predictable even though stable diffusion is quite unpredictable but you'll start to be able to have a better idea of what's going to come out before you even put it in and you'll be able to control the pieces that are specific and important to you thank you so much for watching i hope that this helps uh, I hope some people find this as a really nice way of controlling styles and getting styles to be things that you want, as well as getting a huge array of styles to choose from without having to actually type much of anything out. Thank you so much for watching my videos, home labbers and engineers. I create and edit all of these videos on my own, so any likes and subscribes will massively help out the channel and allow me to continue creating content to help people. If you got value out of this, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel to be notified when new content drops. If there's something I've not covered but you would like to see a video on it, please leave a comment down below. And again, a massive thank you to everyone. I hope you have a great day.